Hello everyone. Welcome to this next session on Anubhav Learning Series. Our today's topic is Build Your Fury App. And also we will discuss about what is the .project.json file which is part of a Fury application. I was researching about this question on what is a .project.json file on the internet and I could not find a satisfactory answer on most of the platforms. So I was tried just exploring a little bit more with the file and I found out some couple of very interesting facts about this file. So let's talk about a couple of questions which comes in your mind. So in the last session we have already created a nice beautiful Fury application with uh, different artifacts as part of the gold standard of creating a Fury app. So let me take you through this Fury application. So this is a Fury application which is taking the data from a real S4 HANA system and basically just storing a uh, couple of uh, products from the S4 HANA system in our Fury application. So this data is coming from a real uh, backend S4 HANA system and showing this data over here in this app. But now the question comes is when we deploying a Fury app, what are all the best practices and gold standards? The very first thing which comes in our mind is we should never deploy the index.html file to the backend system. What is the reason? Why do you think uh, we should not deploy this index.html file into the backend system when we are creating our app? The second reason is how can we also exclude this particular file while being deployed into the into our backend system. So we have already deployed this app in our SAP backend system by using the option called deploy to SAP above repository. So I just quickly show you while deploying this app, I would have given a name just and now when I'm trying to deploy again, it's asking me to just say, do you want to update? So of course, let's uh, give it a try uh, to update this application and we will observe what happens when we try to update or deploy an application to the backend system. So you can see the name of the app which I deployed is with this name Z June our app and I will just click on next and finish and you will see now that system gives me a nice pop up for confirmation and this confirmation system is asking me that I would want or I would want to replace these files. So please give me a confirmation because all these files which are there in your project in the SAP system will actually be replaced. Now at the same time if you carefully observe system is telling you that there is an index.html file which is also there in your project and I am going to replace that file. So let's explore that. Let me say agree, accept, I am fine. Please go ahead. And now when we do OK, you can see the deployment has been started. And in about a kind of a 10 to 15 seconds, we would see this app get uh, deployed to the S4 HANA system. So now I will switch to my S4 HANA system. And we all, as we all know that a Fury app, when it gets deployed in S4 HANA system, it creates a BSP application. So now I go to SE80 and choose here at the type as BSP application and just enter our app name. Click on display and you would find this app has been deployed here successfully. But hey, just look at what has exactly happened. It has got this index.html file. Now, as you aware that any application which we are, if we are shipping the index.html file, uh, it's pretty easy or handy for a, a user, a business user even, who knows little bit of SAP UI5, SAP Fiori, they can simply go to SEAT if they have permission. Of course, maybe uh, your basis would have a better control of uh, transactional level authorizations, they, the, the business users would not have access to SE38 or SE80 of these technical transactions. But just in case, if a smart business user or probably, probably a little more uh, mature business user comes to this transaction and now find out your BSP app name and try to execute this index.html, basically they would be able to open the app. Basically, they will be able to run your app without actually. Uh, going through the security process. So that is the reason we should avoid deploying index HTML as part of our Fury application in the BSP app. Uh, it is similar to the concept if you are familiar with ABAP background. What we do in ABAP programming is when we create an, a screen program or a dialogue program in ABAP, we always create a module pool. Why we create a module pool? Because a module pool program cannot be executed directly from SE38, correct? So if somebody, a user, business user, go to SE38 and try to execute a module pool program, 
system gives an error system says you don't you cannot you have to go through via transaction code right so always they have to go via a transaction code which is created by us of course so your end user always have to access this this dialog program or this screen uh, via the help of the, the transaction code they cannot access the module pool program from se38 directly that's that's actually not permitted so th this is what we do for the reason one of the reason for doing that is security because uh, at the transaction code level when you create it we give the role we give the assignment for the uh, for the for the authorization and based on the authorization which user has we have a very powerful authorization concept uh, using pfcg in a pub system and only then user will be getting an access to the uh, to the module pool so that's a very good basic security for above based uh, dialog application similarly in the fury application when you somehow if your user get to know about the bsp application name uh, which is which is there in the system and if you by mistake deployed the index.html file which you created for your local development local testing uh, in the web ide the user will go somehow and it will directly access your BSP app. Yeah, so this is a little harmful from the security point of view. We should avoid doing that because if they somehow have a clue of technicalities uh, and then they know the BSP app name, which they can also find it out, they will probably go and hit the BSP app directly. And this is a this is not something which we should entertain. So what is a typical flow in terms of security is any user who's going to access a Fury application, the central point for accessing all the Fury apps is SAP Fury Launchpad. So this is the central place uh, which is uh, user should use and the transaction code is slash n slash, of course you have to press slash n, UI2 slash FLP in a SAP system and that's when the security for Fury comes into picture because user will only see the tiles of the application for which the roles are assigned to the user so that's another completely different story if you want to understand more about fury launchpad concepts fury security how it is being all managed how we uh, deploy an application what is the life cycle of an application development building and deploying ultimately you have to subscribe our courses on on our website onlinefurytrainings.com this is one stop shop for all your learning on SAP technical areas, be it SAP UI5, Fiori, S4 HANA technicals, ABAP on HANA, new ABAP syntax, ABAP techniques for performance improvement with SAP HANA, HANA modeling, uh, HANA native development, including XS and XS uh, advanced architecture, concepts about router, root match handler, manifest JSON, component JS, SAP UI5, XML views, web IDE, SAP cloud platform, SAP cloud platform native development, HANA native development cds views amdps adbc sql scripting all these courses fury security fury launchpad launchpad designer fury theme designer best practice uh, built using sap fury grunt js node js all your technical learnings to become an architect in your company we are having a one-stop solution for you without any copy paste of code for all the latest technical stuff available on the website you can always go through it if you have not seen or if you've not got the right direction where should you move what should you start with you can also check my video on my youtube channel anubo Oberoi, with the name the video name is how to become sap full stack developer so the moment you land to our channel you would find this video over here how to become a sap full stack developer what is should be the learning map learning curve for you this is uh, so important you can also find the latest and greatest video this is uh, uh, one of the finest learning series we have on the YouTube for all your technical learning starting from scratch till the advanced level of course uh, some of these videos are very high level videos very advanced videos you may not understand them because they are designed and developed here for the purpose of my existing students who have taken the courses on SAP UI5, Fury, ABAP, on HANA and stuff like that. So maybe, but still there are a lot of free videos here on our channel. You can also go and download the source code and, as well as the PPD and understand the right learning techniques. So coming back once again, so this is what we do actually. We never give uh, index HTML as a deployable unit. But hey, what happened here in my case, uh, we by mistake deployed 
the index HTML. That's an automated process, as you can see. Index HTML is here, and this is uh, this is not the the good practice. This is not a good practice at all, because this index HTML somehow user get an access, and they will probably try to uh, bypass the security for which is offered by the Fury Launchpad. So, of course, majority of the business users don't even know. But just in case, if they know, then your whole purpose of having the Fury security is kind of uh, compromised. So now, how can we avoid uh, sending this particular application uh, to the to the SAP system while deploying? So this is the first question comes in our mind. Uh, what is the right way, or how can we avoid? How to avoid uh, loading or basically sending the index HTML file to Fury system, Fury frontend system, your s system during deployment is one way. The second question which comes is Anubhav, I can probably delete this. Yeah, so I may delete this, but guys, then how do you test it locally? Of course, we have a concept of Fury Launchpad sandbox, but that you need to configure. But just in case, if you want to uh, even go ahead and delete, but I don't think so that makes sense because I mean, it's pretty handy and usable for a developer to use this file to do a local quick testing and just check if the app is qualified for delivery or not. So I don't want to still delete it from my project, but I want a process by which it will just get excluded while getting deployed to my to my SAP system. So that's very important point I want. The second uh, important question which I want to ask you that uh, what are all the gold standard? What are the best practices to deploy your app or deploy our app to SAP system? Yeah. This is the second important question comes in a while. Many of you would have simply right click and say deploy and then Yo, that that that's it the app is there live into the system and then you just create your tile create your catalog and all that fury security of your administration stuff and then you're done but not really uh, a good way not really a best practice because there are many things which you need to take care of. for an instance the same thing index html at times you might have also heard about a feature called component preload.js what is this file component hyphen preload .js file. Basically, this we also use to improve the performance of a Fury application. This is also needed. And if you want to know more about the uh, component preload.js file, you can anyway once again go to my YouTube channel. Just search on the YouTube component preload.js. You'll find on the YouTube there's a video here about component preload.js you can go through that but again uh, you may or may not understand because your basics are kind of very tricky so if you want to work on your code your fundamentals then uh, you are most welcome to attend our trainings we will make sure that you are rammed up you are your foundation has been made strong including html5 css javascript jquery and from there we start writing every single line of code without a copy paste so of course you can go ahead and watch this video on the youtube but i would personally recommend to not do that jump in things directly if you are quite new or if you are maybe an intermediate expert you don't have an idea about the file so don't mess up with these things but just be careful so that is one way to speed up the performance of your fury app while deployment the next question which comes is what is this what is the uh, the dot project dot json file in in my project which is which is created in the fury so if you go back to web ide you see also this file called dot project dot json so these are all the questions which may may come in your mind or you would have asked me in the past in my training but i was uh, i was not able to answer because we have uh, this uh, this uh, Training to complete with none of the topic which I can can exclude from the training. So I thought of creating this YouTube video where you get a fair idea about the stuff. So now if we if we look at this, let's understand what is the process of build. So basically, this on the other side you have your SAP S4 HANA system or SAP Suite system where you want to deploy your app, and on one side you other side you have our SAP Web IDE full stack. Or Web IDE Personal Edition, where you have your uh, Fury application over here. So that's your SAP Fury app, where you're developing it. Now the question is, if I call this uh, this guy over here on the left side as point A, 
Yeah, this is our uh, our point A. And on the other side, if I call this as point B, I want to go from point A to point B. And what is the right mechanism? What is the right path to reach from point A to point B? So we have to now take a trail or we have to take some kind of path to reach to point B. So what is that in the middle we should do or we should not do, we, we need to understand that. So basically guys, the right way of doing this point A to point B journey is to do it via the build process, all right? Of course, there are concepts like CI, CD, if you heard about continuous innovation, continuous delivery, where this process is also can be automated. Of course, we have a concept of grunt JS based best practice build, which I'm covering in my advanced fury training. You can attend that. But in a nutshell, if I just want to do quickly do it here, at least to safeguard yourself a little bit as a UI5 Fury developer initial level, then I would say what is the best practice? The best practice here is to basically create a build. All right. You have to build your app. So build your app, what does it mean? It means packaging. So like, for example, if you order something on Amazon, let's say I ordered a laptop on Amazon. Amazon will not ship me the laptop like a crude, like a raw, right? It won't send me the components. It won't send me the laptop as if wrapped in a polythene. It doesn't. It will properly package it, all right? It will uh, put in, in it into the box. It will put the surrounders. It will put the forms so that there is somehow if there's somebody fall the laptop, it doesn't damage. It will also do the proper packaging. Uh, and then it will also uh, tape my laptop al along with the bill. So it does a packaging while sending you the product similarly you are also sending a product which is your your fury app here is a product to your end users you cannot simply uh, send this raw product to the end user that's not a right way you got to build this you got to package it in the right way so that users uh, users will get the best performance out of it the second thing is users will not somehow breach the security all right like we discussed just in, a, in about a minute so that's the process called build so when you do a build and that that's where the web ide also helps you a lot so that's where the project json file also comes into picture you can configure the build and once you say i want to now deploy what sap web ide does so when you click on deploy button the web ide now it's not going to send this app directly from point a to point b which it was doing it will just go through a build process and now you can configure the build process it will package your application and then you can also specify which folder in web ide it should package usually we give we give the uh, the folder name is dist this stands for distribution so what sap web ide does it will package your app it will create a dist folder and this disk folder will have the required files, which is basically avoiding the index HTML file before sending. Also, it will create a component preload.js file. So that's what the disk folder will be composed of. And then this disk folder content is what it sends to point B. Basically, this will secure you, not just secure you, but also makes the files, which are actually quite important to improve the performance of your app, the minified, justified, file uh, all right so that, that that's what the, the web id will do i will not go more into detail so i think at least you understood the process here so let's go ahead and configure this and that configuration is done using dot project dot json file thank you so much for watching this video please check the part two link of this series into the description of this video